Folks, welcome back to this week's Bible study. And getting the phone lines open, nobody's calling, but we wish you would. We'd like for you to join us with questions, comments, whatever. Anything you want to add to or just make yourself at home. That's what the phone line's for. Love to have you on Skype. Never had Skype yet. Email's open also. I guess Barry and Phil will tell us we've got an email coming in. But we do want to hear from you. We're trying our best to make this available. Everybody wants it. I know you can't be here in person. But the best we can do is have you out there with us live. So join us if you like, okay? We mean that. We'll start a lesson today. i try to get done today if I can. Entitled Pride or Repentance. You can't have both. You can't have both. It's impossible. Pride or Repentance. I want to share a scripture with you a little bit to show you some things you maybe you know consider in your life and in my life also. You know, I read a quote today from a guy named Stuart Chase. Ever heard of him, Phil? Stuart Chase, no. He was a, well, I'm going to say he was a well-known financial advisor. He said, for those who believe, no proof is necessary. For those who don't believe, no proof is ever enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's very true. <clears throat> you know, and no matter how much evidence is in front of them, it, it ain't true. It's sad, isn't it? You can, mm -hmm. you can lay down the Bible in front of somebody, well, it don't mean that. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, <laughs> God... Uh, Compared us to sheep. And sheep oh, yeah. aren't, aren't very smart. No, they're helpless. <laughs> Literally helpless. And I want to do a teaching, if I could, on, this, on these two. I think, well, man's greatest struggle he always was in the garden and is right now is pride. Always pride. Mm -hmm. it can, it'll cause all other types of problems, but pride is ahead of it. What, what caused Satan to fall? Pride. 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 Mm hmm what, what caused man to sin? Pride. He wanted to be like God, didn't he? And what has caused mankind's problems ever since besides pride? Lack of repentance. Lack of repentance. And you can't have both. Mm -hmm. They will not fit together. But struggle being the, uh, pride being the man's harder struggle, a close second is repentance. <laughs> it is hard to say you're sorry sometimes for, with pride in your heart. Now, I know there's just something about in this room. Debbie, don't have a problem with that. No, I don't know. We're, we're perfect already. But other than that, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Repentance is hard for the nature of man to give in to. I like to think I got better over the years, Dana, but uh, I really think I got better. But mm, when I first got married, 10 March, I was wrong. It was like pulling teeth. Even if it was wrong. I know it sounds silly, but I was arrogant. I didn't want to admit I was wrong. Especially to a woman. But anyway, <laughs> I've got better at that now because I've learned I if I don't, I have to... I, yeah, exactly, I did. If I don't <laughs> repent, I get killed. No, no, no. Anyway, but seriously, pride is man's <laughs> downfall. And repentance is a hard thing, a hard pill for any woman or man to swallow. And that's a fact. Those, those want to admit that we're wrong to the point that we uh, really screwed up. But those are, those weaknesses that keep those are the two things that keep that keep the masses out of the kingdom of God. Now let that sink in. Those are the two things that keep the masses out of the kingdom of heaven: pride and repentance. Without repentance, you can't please Him, mm -hmm. and pride will keep you repenting. Those are two things that will keep you out of heaven more than anything else. And believe me. I see it manifest in a lot of Christians' lives. Not repentance, pride. Mm -hmm. And I see the hell puts them through because it's there. Any comments so far? And pride is something that we have a tendency to want just to wallow in and just look at us. You know, look at me, man, look at who I am, or whatever. Repentance makes you just think cringe because if I say it in front of somebody, I'm sorry, they'll think I'm not perfect. Whatever the reason is. I think people can say, I, I don't want to come to the front and be saved because I'm, I'm afraid I'll, I'll be embarrassed. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You'll be embarrassed to accept Christ as your Savior? Why would that embarrass you? Pride. What about those that say that I'd like to change my way, but I'm afraid I'm going to backslide? Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. or, yeah or, I'm not ready yet. I haven't, I, got ready. I haven't made myself good enough yet. Yeah. 
I'm going to read two definitions of pride out of the only dictionary that I really enjoy using. You're Big 28, you, Noah you. Webster. Now listen to what pride is. In inordinate self-esteem. An unreasonable con conceit of one's own superiority. In talents, beauty, wealth, and compliments, rank, or elevation in office. How many of those people that get kind of stuck up when they get higher rank in something, or they're really good-looking people when they get all haughty in that area? Well, that's not Obama, but that's okay. Which manifests itself in lofty airs, distance, reserve, and often in contempt, contempt of others. Insolence, rude treatment of others, insolent uh, exaltation. You see, you see, that's just a few parts of it. Now, if you look at the pride and break it down into the fruit of the pride, this is how I know whether someone is or has not been born again. Or if they've been born again and backslid. The fruit of that is pretty clear. You say, well, now wait a minute, preacher. You're not supposed to judge. Oh, really? Matthew 7, verse 20 says very clearly, Wherefore, I'll know them by their fruits. I can look at a tree and tell you that whether it's an oak tree or not. I can judge that tree. Judge it. I can. You know, I can. You know if it's got fruit or not. I can see it. I can tell what it is because it bears the fruit to prove it. Well, that's the same if I said to you that you did a great job repairing that wall in the house. Didn't I make a judgment? Yeah. Yeah, it's true. So, yeah, we do have the right to judge. I'm going to read some of the things that I, was, I wanted to share with you. Arrogancy, cockiness, judgmental... Always judgmental. I noticed that when somebody's got pride, don't look at me, look what you did. Mm -hmm. Point your finger. Before they even get a chance to know somebody, I know this for a fact, they judge him. I see it all the time. I don't like his attitude. Well, you just met him. How do you know he's not a good guy? I don't like his attitude. Don't like the way he dressed. I don't, this is not the spirit of Christ. Understand that. Matter of fact, if you will, David, look, look up 1 Samuel chapter 15, please. And, and and it's it, it's it's called it calls a strife in the in the home in the body of Christ. Pride causes strife and contentions. Yeah, right, 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 uh, first time you're fifteen. And, and it and it's they're quick to point fingers at somebody and, and put the blame somewhere else because I couldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Look, I'm better than they are. That's pride. You know something? I want to say this. I mean this all my heart. People fuss me with saying this. Don't ever hold me up as an example of something as an idol. Please. Don't put your trust in man. No. If I, if I burn respect, then respect me. But you keep Christ up there, not me. Mm -hmm. I'm just a hillbilly preacher. That's all that I am. I barely speak English. I'm trying to speak Spanish a little bit once in a while. So what are you going to do, you know? <laughs> but I'm just trying to make a point here. Don't ever hold a man up higher than what he is literally worth. And when I say that, I don't mean... Well, for example, my dad to me is, is a hero. He raised two ornery boys. Dick was the meanest one in the bunch. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he raised up two boys. And my dad has, has lived a mm -hmm. life that pretty much exemplifies what a moral man should be. But he's still not my God. I respect him. Is that fair mm -hmm. enough? Mm -hmm. So understand that. Uh, they, 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 they become, people with pride become hateful and picky, quick to anger, hard hearted. <laughs> And a lot of them, believe it or not, are insecure. Mm -hmm. Very insecure. The, the mm -hmm. cockiness shows an insecurity most of the time. But they also are in rebellion and witchcraft. You say, what's that mean? Pride will not let you follow lawful, the lawful dictates of a holy God. And if you're a wife, pride will keep you from obeying a righteous husband or the husband obeying the, his, his Lord or children obeying parents. That's pride. That's putting yourself over those who have authority over you, righteous authority over you. That's pride, that's rebellion. And, and 1 Samuel 15, verse 16 says what, Debbie? Verse 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. Uh, you got 15? Chapter 15? 15, 16. Verse 16. I must have written the wrong one. Whoops. <laughs> Try 13. 16. 13, 16. Uh, that's, I, it's, I thought I had the right one. You got 1 Samuel, right? Yes. Okay. Maybe you're wrong way. Which when he when he told Saul that he, he was in, he was uh, guilty of rebellion, which is witchcraft. Mm -hmm. I, I may go back. back. I'm sorry, <laughs> wrong verse here. But anyway, Saul told Samuel. Uh, Samuel told Saul that you rebelled against the word of God. 
that, that you stood against his laws, and that is this rebellion is the same as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is idolatry. Yep. Verse 13. Verse 13. I'm sorry, verse 13. 15, 13. 15, 13? Yeah. No, 13, 13. 13, 13. 13, 13. 13. 13. Okay. <laughs> okay, I have a Walking Bird Lane. Oh, sorry. What's 13, 13 says, And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Does it have a twitch hat? No. Okay. That didn't, that didn't sound right. But no. I will find out to a while. It's no big deal. It's in there. I promise. But the point of it is this. Pride keeps you from uh, from obeying the, the the word of the Almighty. It keeps you from uh, children from obeying their parents. It's obeying and it is idolatry. Stubbornness is idolatry. Stubbornness is idolatry. To refuse to obey the word of God is idolatry. Mm -hmm. You made yourself God. I'm sorry that's not the right scripture, but uh, it's in there somewhere, I promise. Now let's go to Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16. I watch this so much in homes. I watched it in, in wives against husbands and vice versa. I watch it chilling appearance. I've watched homes destroyed because one of them will not humble themselves before the Almighty and before each other. I see it all the time, Joe. Husbands living in hell with, with a wife that lives like a witch. And a, and a wife trying to be good, the husband living like, live like a, a, a witch himself. You see, the Bible says witchcraft. It means men are witches also in disobedience to the laws of God. Mm-hmm. Proverbs 17, 16. Let's look at verse 17. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserved his soul. Pride go before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Do you think he meant that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. How many times have you ever asked yourself, why do the wicked prosper? Yeah. Why do the people that are most wicked make the most money and control the wealth of the world? It's, it's easy to answer you think about it. It's a curse. It's a curse. Mm -hmm. But the God of this world controls that money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I noticed that in deliverance ministries, that people have an unforgiving spirit. Trust that say of bitterness also have a heavy spirit of pride. Absolutely, they do. B b because they can't even forgive themselves. Yeah, and it's true. And I've watched that unforgiveness, bitter spirit actually destroy them and bring them down lower than dirt. That is so sad. Proverbs 29. Now listen to this. How many in here would be honest enough to say that you've had your pride hurt before? Or your ego got hurt? Yeah. Now there's nothing wrong with ego to the point that you want to be a, a, the right kind of individual. But when ego becomes your God, you're your own God then, aren't you? Mm -hmm. It says in, in Proverbs 22, let somebody watching, they find that verse on, on witchcraft and please call us. Proverbs 29, verse 22 mm -hmm. says this. An angry man stirreth up strife. I can name people right now that I know personally whose personal lives are always under stress. Because rebellion, pride, and witchcraft. They're I'm bringing, serious. They're bringing, they're bringing them to sin. And a furious man aboundeth in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. A man's pride will bring him low. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pride will take you to hell. I don't know how much clear we can make this. Let's go next up, uh, to uh, chapter 11 of Proverbs. <coughs> You know, I think we all go through, especially young, young people. I was, maybe not, I was young people one time too. 
<laughs> it's First Samuel fifteen twenty three. Okay, I just I just had to roll number down for thirteen. Says so, okay, got gotcha. you. Fifteen twenty three. Read it to us, baby. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as as iniquity and idolatry, okay. because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Read that one more time. The first part, of it, real loud. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Mm -hmm. That was what verse again? What changed about the papers? First Samuel fifteen, verse twenty-three. Okay. Mm -hmm. The footnote that. says the word witchcraft here meaning fortune telling. Mm -hmm. This remember, folks, that every time you sense you want to rebel against the word of God or any other righteous authority, it is witchcraft. I get mm -hmm. that highlighted. Okay. Now, in Proverbs chapter eleven, now pay attention. I'll read a verse there in a second. Proverbs eleven. So at verse two. When pride cometh, then cometh shame. You know what the sad part of that is? They're too prideful to admit it. Yeah. They shame themselves, but they won't admit it. They'll not say they're sorry if, if their life's depending on it. They'll not back up an inch. It's shaming them. It's hurting <coughs> the family. Now I'm talking about people I know personally. And they won't back up an inch. Oh, too much pride. Anybody know somebody that kept beside me? Mm -hmm. These are people that feel they're right and they can't do no wrong. Exactly. I go to chapter 8 in the same book. Now listen to what thus saith the Lord God Almighty Jehovah, Yahweh God. I didn't write this book. You better listen to this. Because if you're living in this rebellion, this pride, this arrogancy, if you're living in this, this hateful aura around you that, that you're, you're bitter and angry, just it's always causing a problem because of your, your lack of, of love for others and more love for yourself. If you, if you see this called division in your home, wouldn't you want to get rid of it? Especially when it's a curse to you. Why would anyone want to do that to themselves and their family? Why? In verse, chapter 8, verse 13, what you say there, Joe? The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogancy, and the evil way and the froward mouth do I hate. You think you meant it? Oh, definitely. You see that? Is that the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. If you say you're a born again believer and you say you believe there's a, there's a, that Christ died for you, if you say that, you, that you're a Christian, then you hate evil. Mm -hmm. Even if it's in you. That's right. How many of you ever got a whipping besides me? <laughs> well, <laughs> it happens, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. How many times do you feel you had to go before the Lord and say, I'm sorry, I, I messed up on that. Help me get better at this. Oh, yeah. We're to hate evil. If we love God, respect God, reverence God, we have to hate evil, pride, arrogance, and every evil work. Now, what do I do about that? Mm -hmm. So I preach hard against the murder of children. Is that what I should be doing or not? I hate that. That's evil. To love God is to reject sin. That means to reject pride. Exactly. Okay. I hate evil. I can't stand the idea of somebody murdered a baby. Yet this nation is allowed to happen now for how many years? Forty. Yeah, forty years. Not forty. This year. Fifty-five million babies at least are crying out to God in heaven. And Dan, don't you believe he hears their call? He does. And I ain't supposed. I'm not supposed to preach about it. I'm being judgmental. That's righteous judgment. Chapter 13. You know, I want so badly to be able to set you free through Christ in all these bindings and bondage that you're in. I don't care what it is. I don't care if you're a dope head, an alcoholic, a, 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 a murderer or a thief or a homosexual. I know the one that can set you free from that and make you pure and clean and righteous in Him. Give you joy and peace and gentleness and meekness and kindness. All those things can be yours for free. That's right. 
if you just accept it. Mm -hmm. Get ready in pride, repent before the Almighty, and say, accept your sin, my Savior. I'm sorry I sinned. Make me one of yours. And you know what? He'll do that. You're not going to find help in the, the, the Democrat Party, Republican Party, or even the Constitution Party. That's not the answer. The answer is Christ. If that built on that, then all of those would rise up to, to fit the bill. But unfortunately, no one wants to hear that. That's right. Help is not in mankind. Help is in Christ alone. Right. If mankind were right with Christ, then you could trust them for some needs on this earth. But unfortunately, because we trusted man instead of God, it's taken away everything we once had in him. Even the peace to travel down a highway without being fear of being arrested. Amen. Pride. Any comments so far? <clears throat> Chapter 13, verse 10. Only by pride cometh contention. Ah, listen. Only by pride cometh contention. Pride goes before all quarrels and arguments. <laughs> mm -hmm. But what the way up buys is wisdom. Pride causes contention. Does anybody know anybody in their lives that are in contention because the husband and wife can't get along or the children of Belgian parents? Sure. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Usually isn't it because of bad decisions? Yes. Chapter 6. Chapter 6. Proverbs? Yes. I'm trying to drill this into your head. It's all through the Bible. I'm picking these verses here because they're in one book. But you find a curse on pride everywhere you go in this book. Everywhere. Old New Testament both. Pride is what brings man to destruction. And pride manifests itself in so many different ways. That's why I feel I'm, I'm, I want to be so careful that even though I've known all the country basically as a preacher in some places and as, as a talk show host, I don't want that to ever be anything. I'm just butch. I'm doing my job. is all I'm doing. Well, I think what's sad is uh, people mistake professing Christians to be prideful. And yes. If they're a real uh, blood-bought, uh, well-grounded um, Christian, they're, they're, they're really... The powers, they're not claiming the power comes from them. They're, they're, they know the source. I but, have no power in myself. But for the most part, Christians are, you know, it's like, what gives you the right to say that? Yeah. Well, you know, it comes from here. It's a duty to say that. So, you know, the, the amazing thing is that the public at large is very prideful, but they actually uh, mistakenly say that the Christians are prideful. Well, let's just take, for example, Christians. the homosexuals. How proud are they? Very Marched very, in the street naked, very. proclaiming their rights. Mm -hmm. But you speak up, you're judging. Right. You're hateful. Oh, great gay pride parade. Exactly. Yeah. Duh. Flag. They're the most unhappiest people in the world. Oh, they are. Yeah. They're they're terribly unhappy. That's why. <laughs> that's why they're. <laughs> that's why they keep pushing the envelope. Yeah. Yeah. Proverbs six. Misery loves company. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. Verse sixteen. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Is that what your book says too? Yep. Same thing. A proud look. What's the first thing listed? Proud. Proud. Pride. The first thing listed is pride, Phil. Which leads to lying tongues. And hands that shed innocent blood. Another one. Mm -hmm. and, and heart that divides wickedness, wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift and range to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. I want to tell you right now for a couple of fact, I'm not a rookie at being a pastor and preaching for pastor for 35 years. And I've seen churches split in groups split with pride, pride, pride. Nothing else but pride. My he said, they said, they said, shut up, grow up. Why can't we act like Christians and adults? Because we got to get Christ from here into the heart here. It breaks my heart. 
And I can sit right there and tell them, Joe, right to their face, that Satan going to attack and try to divide us and, and do this. And they let it happen anyway. Mm -hmm. Don't you think t Satan takes joy, Dana, in dividing the body of Christ? Oh, that's his biggest thing. That's what he lives for. And when he divides a home, when he, when he conquers a home, destroys a home, that is one of his greatest victories. Mm -hmm. Because a home, yeah. Debbie, is where everything starts. That's right. And believe me, I've experienced that one. Any comments so far? All right, let's go to Psalm. Um, so let's, let's go to, let me go one more time here. Let's go to chapter 28, Proverbs. I know that most of you don't hear this kind of preaching. I'm going to scare some of them. Mm hmm but we, if we lose what we call the hellfire brimstone preaching, there's no, the people don't fear the Lord anymore. They have no fear. But it's, I'm okay, you're okay, doctrine, it's okay, wait for the rapture, once saved, all saved, live like hell and go to heaven. That's not in the book, but they believe it. Yep. Proverbs 28. Let's look at verse 25. Where is it? He that is a proud heart stirreth up strife. But he that put his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. He that trusts in his own heart is a fool. But whoso walketh wisely, he shall be delivered. Now is that pretty clear? Did I, did I explain that one? Is that pretty clear to you, Deb? You got that figured out probably by now? It's not real complicated, is it? No. Psalms. Psalms 101. That's where you start, right? In, 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 in biology 101, right? Yeah, 101. 101, yeah. <laughs> well, the common so you don't even get that far. You know, uh, the way things are today, it should be pretty easy to see that the warnings in the Bible are right. Oh, my. I mean, there were times probably when it would be harder to see, you know, like the good times right after World War II, you know, mm -hmm. you, you didn't see all this stuff. There's still some variety left. Still some, some normal things right. happening. Right. Dana, you know, you Psalms 101. Can you read a verse for us? Would you read verse, uh, uh, say verse 4, please? No, yeah, verse 4, yeah. A froward heart shall depart from me. I will not know a wicked person. He don't mean that, does he? means everything he says. You will not esteem that wicked person. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, we'll read it too. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will I will not I suffer. Is that pretty clear? Is that so that prideful not gonna make it in, in the kingdom of heaven? Is that what it says? Mm -hmm. If our God will look upon you with pride in you, hang you in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Do you have any comments? You're not gonna, you're not gonna get his grace. You know, there's no shame admitting you've done wrong. I mean, I will, with all sincerity, how many people in here will honestly say that I've messed up before? Yeah, but you messed up. I messed up. Smack <laughs> 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 him, Debbie. He, he, he told me to say it. He told me to say it. Let me just show you something. In Romans chapter chapter 3. Probably all of this memorized. Go read it. <clears throat> Romans 3. You know... The Bible makes it so easy to get it right. We just through our hard headedness and perverse thinking just don't want to accept it. How many of y'all know that flesh is a strong adversary? It is the absolute hardest thing to control. But even Paul said, I got crucified my flesh every day. Is that not true? Mm -hmm. It's not once done, always done, is it, is it data? It's, you crucify a place every day, don't you? You're in a spiritual warfare yeah. every day. I mean, it's like weeding a garden. You can weed it this week, and guess what? Back next week. Mm -hmm. You know, you weed it, corn's that high, you weed it, and next week, the weed's that high, and corn's that high still. You know, you got to pull <laughs> yeah. it and do it again. Yeah. It's the way the flesh is. It's always coming up, Debbie. No matter how old I get, I'm still my biggest enemy. I can blame the devil if I want to, but I'm the one that does Thank it. you for not blaming me. <laughs> good to you, Dave. But just think about this a minute. We all have that weakness, so please don't be hard on yourself. 
We all have to fight the same battle against temptations. Even Christ was tempted. He was. Mm -hmm. No way we're tempted. Yet without seeing, right? Mm -hmm. So don't be hard on yourself if you messed up. It happens. If you know you've done things that need forgiven, ask for forgiveness. Well, preacher, I've been a Christian for 20, 30 years. I already messed up again. Will you forgive me again? Yes, he'll forgive you again. First John 2 says he'll forgive you because that's what he promised he'd do. Ask him. Repent. We'll get to repentance in a minute. Repent of what you've done. And say, I'm sorry, Father. I don't want to do it any longer. He'll forgive you. If he didn't forgive us, almost on a daily basis, we wouldn't make it very far, would we? How many of y'all make it to heaven? With, how many y'all can make it to heaven without grace? No. 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 Yeah. Romans three twenty three says what, Phil? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yep. Is that true? Yep. Mm -hmm. All. Yep. Each and every one of us. So it's not. A sh it's not. Don't be ashamed of Mitch of sin. We have. And he's the one who paid the price for the sin. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stay in that sin. You don't have to live in that sin. You can be set free from that sin if you'll give it to him. Mm -hmm. Why do we hang on to that? We're people. I know pride's the biggest cause, but we don't have to. Let me just show you something here. Look at Luke chapter, chapter uh, 13. Then you, you want to add anything? I can see you thinking over there. Oh, that's, that's pretty good if you can see that. <laughs> <laughs> just smoke. Oh, it's just, oh. <clears throat> Christ writing something here that I think maybe we should pay attention to. I would think that when Christ speaks, we probably ought to pay a little bit of heed to that. You know? mm -hmm. even, even more than, than you do Kelly, Joe. Oh. <laughs> I wish he'd listen to me as much as I ignore the Lord. I hear you. Chapter 13 of Luke, verse 1. There were present at that season some that, some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus answering said unto him, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all the Galatians, Galileans, because they have suffered such things? I tell you, nay. But except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Mm-hmm. Or, or those eighteen, or those eighteen upon whom the tower in Shalom, Shalom fell, and slew them. Thank ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem. I tell you, nay, except ye repent, ye shall all like rice perish. <laughs> now, how clear is that? And what does it mean, repent? Well, just read here and see in the in the dictionary that I do trust. I've got to find again. Here it is. <laughs> To remember with sorrow as to repent rash words, to repent in an injury to anyway, the neighbor, I'm jumping down further. Sorrow for anything done or said, the pain or grief which a person experiences in, co in con consequence of the injury or inconvenience produced by his own conduct. In theology, the pain, regret, or affliction which a person feels on account of his past conduct because it exposes him to punishment. That's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. The sorrow proceeding merely from the fear of punishment is called legal repentance as being excited by the tears of legal penalties and, and it may exist without, without a amendment of life. Now that's important. I'm going to read to you now if, if I could very quickly. Let's go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Now this is important. Second, uh, I'm, I'm going to get there. Oh, okay. yeah. Say enough for next. Just, Just hang okay. on to it. 2 <laughs> Corinthians chapter 7. Look what it says. Did you know that the 1820 dictionary was based on scripture too? Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. I think it has over 6,000 um, scriptural verses, whatever. References. Verses, references. This is where this comes from. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, let's look at verse 9. Paul writing, Now I rejoice, not that ye were made sorry, but that ye made ye sorrow to repentance. Now, I'm going to make a point here. When you were a little fella and you went in the house, got a cookie, you were supposed to, you got your hand slapped, you were sorry. But you saw you got caught. You got sorry you got caught. <laughs> exactly. Sorry you still did a cookie you got champion. You saw you got caught, right? Yep. right? Paul said, I'm sorry that you were sorry to repentance. But you won't do it no more. That's a big difference, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. when, whenever I told my boys when I discipline them, I'm not looking to discipline your rear end. I want to get to your heart. If I can get to your heart, I won't need the rear end no more. 
True. But use the rear end when you can. You have to. Yeah. Hey, no reason. Yes. It says, For ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive da damage by none of us, but by us and nothing. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. In other words, it's the difference between sorry I got caught and sorry I did it. Right. Yeah. Big difference. Is that important, Dana? Now, this is what the word means in real, real penance. Sorrow or deep contrition for sins as an offense and dishonor to God. He lists that first. A violation of his, of his holy law and the, barest, uh, the basest ingratitude towards a, a, a being of infinite benevolence. This is called evangelical repentance and is accomplished and followed by a amendment of life. Big difference. Worldly sorrow means, I'm sorry I got, ca I got caught, but I'll do it again. Godly sorrow means, I'm sorry I did it, but I'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. Is that important? So you see, a person tells you that you're saved, and they keep doing the same sins over and over, and somebody's lying to you. Yeah. Any comments so far? It goes on to say, a change of mind, or a conversion, or a conversion from, hey, from sin, sin to God. Thank to you. God. Didn't get that far. Right. Turn yeah. to, yep. Good point. Let's go to Acts, chapter 17. What do you think, Dick? I'll make another point here to show you something that repentance is, is, is really necessary. In Acts 17, let's look at verse, what's the verse here a second, verse 30. In the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now, meaning now, he wrote it, commandeth all men everywhere to repent. <coughs> all men everywhere to repent. Mm -hmm. Does that mean all men? Mm -hmm. And we're without excuse, without excuse now because Jesus is Jesus. Exactly. Is mm -hmm. Before he came, we had an excuse because we didn't have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, since Christ is here, <coughs> we all have a degree or a maximum degree of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we are without excuse of what takes place. And that's a key element in the whole thing. We're, according to Scripture in, in Hebrews 10, 26, we have to give more account than those in the Old Testament. If you notice yeah. there, it says it's a commandment. Yes. And it's not an option. No, it is a commandment. And yeah. it's a necessary part for salvation. And if pride's in the way, what happens? It gets canceled. We you can't saved. have it. We aren't saved by repentance. That's right. But it's a part of it's a part. You have to repent to, to receive it. Mm -hmm. So pride blocks the repentance. Right. And repentance goes against our nature, doesn't it? It does. It does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not really hard. You just got to accept it. Right. In Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. Okay. Let's look at what John was doing. You know who John the Baptist was? Mm-hmm. Verse 4, John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Notice the baptism of what? Repentance. Baptism is a type of, uh, repentance is a type of baptism mm -hmm. in the Spirit. That must come from the Spirit. It can't come from you. It's led by the Spirit. You understand you need it? He gives you, the, even He gives you the power to repent. You know, and, and to, be, to be born again, that, you, that faith that you had to be born again comes from Him? Mm-hmm. You understand that? Repentance comes from Him. He helps you repent. That's a baptism of repentance of sins. You repent when you do that. That's a sign that you're born again. And the faith you had to be born again comes from the same one. Why do we fight it's a free gift from the beginning to the end that way, Phil? <laughs> You've got to get out of the way. Oh. Acts 26. Baptism represents a dying to yourself. Yes. Sin also represents a dying to yourself. I mean, repentance also represents a dying to yourself. Good point. In fact, you'll find that in Romans chapter 6. Chapter 6. You know, the scriptures are not complicated except to the point that we always want to make them fit what we want to make them fit. Mm -hmm. Once I finally got out of my head that the free will Baptists didn't know everything, 
the Bible started coming alive to me. Mm-hmm. When you discovered that uh, God is not a respecter person? Yep, I did. Mm-hmm. Or, or doctrine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When I finally realized that what, I, what the Bible said was what the Bible said, it got easier, Bill. Well, these organizations as a whole are prideful. Oh, yeah. That's why they have their doctrine. Now, I'm going to show you something. In Acts chapter 26, and you pay attention to this. Repentance brings on something. That if you don't have, you're not saved. Acts Acts 26, let's look at verse 20. Well, let's just look at verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not dissipated into the heavenly region, but showed burst into the end of Damascus and of Jerusalem and of Jerusalem, and throughout all the coast of Judea, and then to the Gentiles. That covered by everybody, right? Mm-hmm. That they should repent and turn to God and do works. Meet for repentance. Ooh. For that, by the way, for that reason, he taught that the Jews tried to kill him. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. He said, you're going to have works meet for repentance. That means that you're going to have fruit by, by for repentance. What's he talking about? Let's go to Psalm. Psalms. Let's look at this. You see, I, I want to see, I don't want to hear you say it, I want to see you live it. Mm-hmm. Psalm 51. I want to say something right here in front of Phil and Lynn. It might embarrass him, but that's okay. I've known them for a couple of years. Everywhere I see them, they're the same. Lynn's Lynn and some Phil. Lynn's in the elbows. Lynn's in here. She sees me, she hugs me. Phil at the tea party day just screamed when he saw me. He's my brother. He's tickled to see me. That is what I'm seeing the fruit of people. Mm-hmm. They're consistent. They're not up and down like a yo yo. You understand what I'm saying? The, the maturity in them, it keeps them on an even keel. It doesn't mean they don't have different days, difficult days, <laughs> yeah. but they're on an even keel as a witness to people. And this, and I watch the fruit, of their, the fruit of their loins, the children, the girls. And what come out of this home? That's about as high as Pat Coffin. I'm giving anybody. A person not on an even keel and does stand Yes, he is. I can't imagine being bipolar. <laughs> that, it must be really terrible. And I've known some people mm-hmm. that have been. Oh by, yeah, by and, by, and bipolar is actually caused by demon spirits. Now, pay attention. In verse sixteen of Psalm fifty-one. Listen, to the Lord God wrote this: "For thou desirest not sacrifice." You know, God doesn't want a sacrifice. All He wants is obedience. You know that pride will prevent repentance. And pride will prevent obedience. Do y'all know that? Mm-hmm. May his name. You never notice, Phil, that you never had to teach one of your one of your children to be to be to be uh, prideful. They just get it naturally. <laughs> you ever notice that? Yeah, you know, I, I never had to teach my boys how to tell a lie. That was pretty well inherited. Pretty well did on the earth. Human nature. Yep. Be yeah. anyway, For thou desirest not sacrifice, else will I give it. Thou dost delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, thou will not despise. That is repentant spirit. A contrite spirit. A broken heart is a repentant heart. Yeah. You see the fruit that just read to you that bring forth fruit and meet repentance. It's a broken, contrite spirit and a heart that desire to serve him. It's just so easy. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that, you're not his. How clear is that? Feel your thinking. What are you thinking about? Uh-oh. Well, it's like you, if you listen, if you follow this, then it's kind of like you're looking at the world through the eyes of God and seeing it totally different. Oh yes. And that's that's the thing. That's why you're going to be, you're going to you're going to feel those things like He felt them, because you're you're seeing it the way He saw it. Isaiah fifty-seven. As much as well, a human could. That's a good point. Let me ask you this: if we if we could become more like Him, I can read about that. But that young man trying to look like Justin Bieber. That breaks my heart. Mm-hmm. It breaks, it really, I hurt for him. I well, love I love telling about Jesus. I really would. I love telling about Christ. Both of you had the same daddy. Oh yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing. You're, you know what I mean? You're you're he's 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 created by the same God. Right. Just <clears throat> not serving him, not born again. 
Mm-hmm. He, and, and I want so much to be able to reach people like that and <laughs> let them know that there is hope. And it's not in trying to look like somebody or be somebody. Do you know that God made Kelly the way she is, even short? He made her for a purpose that way. No, I'm not picking Kelly. It's not true. Yeah. He made Dana the way he is for a purpose. He made every one of us in here and all over this world for a purpose. To be like we are. If he wanted you to be different, he made you different. And he gave us gifts when we were even, before we were born. Exactly. To edify his kingdom. When the time that you're conceived in the womb... Your features have been already predetermined. You right. know that? Yep. Mm-hmm. I tell you going to be, how old you going to be, call your hair, everything. When you're going to lose it? When you're going to lose it? Oh, <laughs> that's in there, yes. That's true, it is. It's all yeah. right. That's how perfect our God is. Mm-hmm. So we don't need to search to be something we're not. Just be you in Christ. Yeah. Whether you're pretty or ugly or thin or fat or dumb like me, it makes no difference. Just be who you in Christ. Well, it makes life joyful that way. Mm-hmm. Wasn't it amazing when you see someone who lost physical health, uh, became uh, paraplegic or whatever, and that's when they actually became uh, blood-bought and, and thank the Lord for that happening to them Amen. because they, they realized now yes. they're serving Him. And, and that was through adversity that woke them up. You Sometimes know? you brought It's usually love. through adversity right. that you turn. So, I mean, with the world the way it is, as adverse as it is, this is the time people are going to wake up. And that is really the thrust of anyone who's a true believer. It's, even the ministry on radio is trying to reach people. If, they, if I'm getting to see enough truth of what's happening, perhaps they'll see the insanity that's missed mm-hmm. and won't know the answer. And I got the answer. <laughs> I know the answer. I'm any person. <laughs> mm-hmm. I did. I mean, that, that's, what, that's what I tried to tell them down in Nicholas County is that this is yes. overall a spiritual battle and... and you're not going to hear that from most other candidates. It's all about giving me. Right. Promising. Isaiah 57. I'm going to get this done. I'll be there after all. Verse 15. Now see if this talks about the one I'm thinking about as being the charge. For thus saith the high and lofty one. Who would that be? God. Papa mm-hmm. Obama. Oh. <laughs> that, that inhabit eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. Now stop for a second. He dwells with those with a contrite and humble spirit. In mm-hmm. eternity. Mm-hmm. In eternity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Would that be people that repent? Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. Not funny, but the opening. For thus saith the high and lofty. Yes. We're talking Adonai, Most High, Supreme, Master Judge, Supreme Judge, Ma- the highest Master, magistrate. Uh, magistrate of, of yes. all living, yes. created, or seen. Yeah, that's right. But we can imagine that. Our mind can't go that far, but that's what it is. But we get to be with Him. Yes. If we have a repentant heart. It says, with Him, with him also, that, uh, with, uh, that with a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Isn't that beautiful? Mm-hmm. The fruit of the spirit, the fruit of repentance is a contrite uh, spirit and broken heart. Not broken heart that you're sad all the time, but a broken heart that you sinned against the Almighty and want to be born again. Yeah. And how many hearts broken every day what you see around you? Oh. Yes. How many times do we break God's heart daily? Oh, I know. That's why we should be able to understand how Christ felt. Mm-hmm. If he's in us, mm-hmm. we should have some feeling of how he felt for what he saw around him. Compassion on people that don't care. And I can honestly say that I would love, sincerely, to be able to lead Obama to Christ. I would. Well, the worst thing that ever happened to him is when Newsweek put him on the cover and said the next Messiah. Uh, yeah. yeah, they called him God. Really? Yeah. I mean, I showed that. Isaiah 66. <coughs> Fox called him God, didn't he? I like to see true Christian get in the White House and stop abortion and gay rights. And- and there will happen until overnight. we repent. It's going to happen one day when the Lord returns. Until then, nothing ain't going to happen. Isaiah 66, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord. There he is again. Stick those in our business. Mm-hmm. The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is, it, where is the place of my, of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and those things have, have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. Mm-hmm. We're talking about Jesus here. 
Amen. I like it. Think a minute. Yeah. That trembleth at his word, that respects what he says, that obeys his word. How many people today obey his word? I'm guilty. I fail a lot. But I mean, how many people they even try to obey his word? That's just what I should say even better. They really have a heart to obey his word. I think we forgot how to reverence the Christ child. Because these two verses are talking of Christ. Wait, which founding father was it said that said he trembleth at that God is righteous? That's that's, well, that's, that's righteous. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson said that, yeah. Yep. Let's 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 go to Luke fifteen and closing here in a second. <laughs> Luke had said something like that too. He couldn't finish the communion service because of that. Let me make a couple. Let me just show you a few things I would could of the fruit of repentance. One that the I think the most key one I'd be able to find the most the most key fruit that I've seen in a truly repentant man or woman is humbleness. Because they know better than anybody else how much they need salvation. Mm -hmm. Humbleness. God forbid I become arrogant in any way. My marshal, anyway, I couldn't just can't retire. But how, Phil, how would I ever be puffed up when I know that I, I got the Lord the same way you did on my knees? See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What do I have in me to be, to be puffed up about? I can boast of Christ. Right. That's all. Humbleness is the first thing. When I see a person who's not humble, I see a person not saved. So being humble means to be zeal for the Lord? Exactly. Oh, it means have a, a, a pure heart. Yeah. Pure zealous heart is the way you look at yeah. that. Yeah, being zealous. Whenever I see someone who's arrogant and not humble, if they were following Christ, it backslid. But I doubt they ever got saved. Mm -hmm. Humbleness is, was Christ humble? Mm -hmm. Well, and it, it's tough. You can be very committed and still be humble. But there are a lot of people that just, uh, you know, I think the people that we know that are just so arrogant that you know there's there's no there's, there's no spirit there's no the love, no the love of Christ not in them. Yeah, I have nothing to, in my flesh to. Even Paul said this to brag on. There's nothing in my flesh to be that's worth even talking about. I'm a mm -hmm. mere man. Well, the only ability you got came from Christ. That's exactly right. No one else. No. He didn't feel the ability to build Obama head. It came from Christ. <laughs> exactly. He didn't build on his own. <laughs> For me fixing my neighbor's fire. Well, maybe he's right. I didn't build that. Christ did. <laughs> we but were just the tools that did. One day, yeah, one day tool, for right. certain, all flesh had one thing in common. One day, somebody looked at me in the casket. The body of me. I won't be there. But that's our, that's our end. You're not going to change that. That's why a man wants to, wants to be able to create life. Sure. And, and so that he can be he can play God. But humbleness is the fact of knowing your own faults. And I got two or three. Yes, Marcia. <laughs> Not overly judgmental in a wicked way. No, 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 no. Don't ever be that way. I will preach against evil and I will point it out when I see it. But I'll tell you this. I told you many times. But right at this table right here, right where Phil sat and I was sitting, with Joe sitting with this young man sitting named Jared. A homosexual. You remember that night, Phil? For an hour, hour and a half, we talked. Mm. Led him to Christ. He got saved. When come to the state of church, get baptized. His mom and dad would not let him come. Six months later, he took an overdose. Uh-oh. And died, mm. yeah. And he told you that he'd been to church and no preachers had ever uh, preached against sodomy. Never even told him. He, he told you. He said, I yeah. didn't know it was wrong. Yeah. Mm. Isn't that sad? Mm -hmm. I wasn't about to call that to a boy out because he was a homosexual. He come to know the truth and by the grace of God, I got the answer. Right. I really did and I ain't, I'm not the one to judge him with that part. My job is to show the sin but the grace of God cures that sin. Right. There, there are two doctors out there today. Dr. Law will, will diagnose a problem. Dr. Grace will cure it. Got that? Mm -hmm. Dr. Law diagnoses it. Dr. Grace cures. You need both of them. But one, none, they're not complete without the other. So people that t teach are in the law don't know the sin. They don't need grace. You understand? Right. Any comments so far? It's also meekness, not weakness, but meek. Easy to be talked to. Teachable. Easy approach. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, 
joyful. That doesn't mean all the time walking around laughing. But anybody that knows me more than three seconds knows I like to pick and laugh. I personally love my life as a Christian. I like the people I'm around. When I just met Doug, first met Doug, I was already picking on him. I think Doug's got a good heart. I really do. I think, I think it's a good heart. And, and, and I, I love to let people know I care. Maybe in a roundabout way, I don't know, because I do pick them or something, but that's because I care. Mm -hmm. I joke with people that I care for. Is that fair to say that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I pick on Phil a lot and vice versa. You already know that. So it's because they love each other. It's joyful. If you care for someone, you want to make sure that they do know it. Absolutely. And peace is another fruit of, of repentance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You've been forgiven. Praise God, you've been forgiven. You can go to bed at night and go to sleep and know that if you don't wake up, it's okay. Yeah. That's peace, isn't it? Yeah. The whole world's in turmoil, but you can go to sleep. Yes, you can. And not only that, but you're a peace seeker. Yeah. You're trying to bring peace into to people that will not have it. Oh, I get tired of this trying to be a peacemaker, and they won't receive it. But you're a peacemaker. You want to have peace in the body of Christ. You want to have peace in your own family. You're seeking peace. I didn't say compromise. I said peace. And gentle, gentle. That doesn't mean you're weak. It means you're gentle to all people who desire the help. All those who are allowed, you will be gentle to. And you're full of agape love. Yeah. Godly love. You want to read a couple more verses? Go close. Any comments? I was just looking at Galatians chapter 5. Uh, was it verses 20? Or 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. But they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust, which means they surrendered pride. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. You have to surrender it. If you don't, you won't get in. That's right. But in Luke chapter 15, I'll read this in closing. <laughs> Verse 7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repented more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. So what does that tell you? When a soul comes to Christ, there is shouting in heaven mm -hmm. for joy. That was the verse. That when I walked away from Christ as a young man, it was this verse. Of course, it came from a different Bible, if you want to say it said, all the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner who returns then over nine hundred. And that verse brought me back to Christ when I read that. Amen. And that was the verse that said, okay, God will accept me back. Absolutely. And in verse 9, it's talking about a woman who lost peace silver. It said, when she found it, she called her friends and rejoiced, rejoiced me. He said, I found what I lost. Mm -hmm. Do you know that in heaven, Phil, when you come to Christ that day, whatever years ago, there was rejoicing in the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Wow. They were watching that close. They rejoice when you come to Christ. Well, just to think that He's the maker of this whole universe. Yeah, and beyond it, that. And beyond everything. I mean, uh, and I know when, if I'm working on something and I've got 15 tools I've got to go get, <laughs> it's that one tool that I couldn't find. When I find it, 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 it gives me more pleasure than those other Amen. 14 yes. that I didn't <laughs> yeah. have to look for. The one for. you really need. Yeah. <laughs> Folks, we do love you. We're going to close. And, uh, don't worry back in a couple weeks or not. If we're getting too far ahead in the lessons. We're going to have to back up a bit and get caught up with you all a little bit there and watch them on DVD. We'll back up. We'll announce on the radio one time and come back, okay? We love you. Bye-bye. Holy cloud of witnesses surrounds us as we walk. Saints and martyrs through the ages who have marched this way before. And they cry, oh church, take courage, it's your time to take a stand. Time to march with hearts courageous through. We're marching on with hearts courageous. We'll follow everywhere you want us to. And 
Oh 